We've seen how easy it is to manipulate keyframes and ranges in the timeline. Let's also look at a window that gives us more control. And we can actually isolate the position and rotation keys. We could operate on different objects all at once if we needed to. This window is called the dope sheet. And that's a term from traditional cell animation. A dope sheet, also known as an exposure sheet or X sheet, is a spreadsheet that lists every single frame in the animation and data about what's happening on that frame. Let's open up the dope sheet, but before we do, let's select that camera because the dope sheet is designed to, by default, only display keyframes on selected objects. It's found in Graph Editor's menu, and the item is Track View Dope Sheet. The track view shows all of the animatable parameters in the scene. Each one of these is a track. And here, our selected physical camera is displayed, and we have some white boxes here that indicate the keyframes. If we open up the physical camera with this little plus sign, we'll see that there are some subtracks inside there. Transform is the only one that's relevant here. We've only keyframed the position and rotation. Open up that transform as well, and we see kind of a breakdown of what we've got in our scene in terms of keyframes. I can move my timeline just by dragging this little bar here. And I'd like to explain what all of these mean. These little boxes here are sometimes keyframes and sometimes not keyframes. In the 3ds Max help document, they're actually referred to as, and this is not a joke, they're called fake keys. If we open up the position track, we will see XYZ position. And these are actual tracks that have actual keyframes in them. But position is not an actual track. And I know the difference here because actual tracks that have real keys in them are light colored in the interface here. So these are real keyframes. Okay, well, what are these fake keys? Fake keys are a way for you to select subordinate real keys. This is basically a category of keys. All the position keys are gonna be shown here. And that's easier to see if we go down to the end here because we've got both position and rotation keys present at frame 150. I can open up rotation and we can see that there are keyframes on X, Y, and Z rotation as well. If I wanna move only the position keys, then I can go over here and click on the position keyframe. Let me make sure I'm not selecting anything else by just clicking here and deselecting everything. And then I can click on the fake key in that position row, click and drag that, and now I'm only moving the position keys and not the rotation keys. Okay, so that's cool, but it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. All right, I can move that back. If I wanted to move all of the transform keys, then I would deselect everything, go to the transform row here, and click there, and drag, and now I'm moving all the position and all the rotation keys. Okay, so if it's a light colored track, it's got real keyframes in it. If it's a dark colored row, then it's not even a track and it's not even keyframes, but it's a convenient way to select all of the subordinate keys. There's a lot going on in the dope sheet. We're really just gonna scratch the surface here. We also have the ability to edit ranges just like we did in the timeline. And that's what this button is here. If we click on that, then now we don't get to see individual keys, but we see the ranges of all those keys. And it's basically just an expanded version of what we saw in the timeline. We could click on one of these endpoints of the ranges. And if I clicked here, I would actually be editing all the keyframes for that object. Okay, but usually you'll be working in edit keys mode. The dope sheet is a very powerful tool. The important thing to keep in mind is that some of these rows are actual tracks and some of them are just a convenient method for selecting subordinate tracks.